Hello, this video is to help you understand Normandale's vacuum technology course offerings. And I am Dr. Ruth Robinson. I'm an instructor in both chemistry and vacuum technology at Normandale. Um, this chart shows you all the classes we currently offer. There's a box for each class. And most people will start here on the left at vacuum, uh, Vac Tech 1010, um, which is a course that teaches you the concepts of chemistry, math, and basic science that you will need to understand um, all of vacuum technology. So things like the behavior of gas molecules, how to do measurements, um, work with units and number conversions, how to solve equations, and topics like vapor pressure. It is offered often as a 16-week course, or you can take it as an accelerated eight-week course. After you take vacuum technology 1010, you move into VacTech 1293. And um, notice the black arrows will show you the course paths that are available. There are some choices. So for instance, after 1293, you have two choices of the next course to take. Um, also notice that the boxes are all blue or green. Um, all of our courses are offered online, so you can take them from remote locations, but there are two types. The ones um, in blue are asynchronous online, and the ones in green are synchronous online. Synchronous courses mean that you have live class meetings you, where you get to interact with the instructor and other students. Usually the course classes are offered once a week, and there's usually homework between classes. The asynchronous ones, the blue ones, is where all the work is done according to your schedule when it fits with your schedule with specific deadlines as you go along. All right, so starting with 1293, you become more equipment or process oriented than you did in VacTech 1010. Um, in fact, you will operate remote vacuum equipment yourself in real time from your computer. After you take Vac Tech 10, you will be working with actual vacuum systems from your remote location. And this is an example of one of them. I'm going to give you a very quick view of what it's like. Um, this is the vacuum system. There's a chamber on top. There's a uh, pump here. There's a variety of gauges, which you will learn about. But um, that's the actual system running on campus. And you can also toggle to a picture of the what's going on here's the chamber here's the pump and there's some valves and you can see that right now this valve's open and air is being pumped out of the chamber to the pump we have a variety of readouts in pressure and time and you can get pronounce of those and work with them anyway all i'm going to do is show you that we can turn this valve off just with a click that's something you can do and now we can also open the valve to the room so it starts filling air into the chamber. And so the chamber will fill up with gas, it becomes dark in this, in this um, schematic picture, and you can see the flow of the gas. Again, we can shut this, and then you can see, you can see the pressure change. We can open up the pump again, start pumping on it again. So the real thing is happening on campus while you work with the simulation and collect data for your courses. This diagram also shows the former course structure shown here in three boxes, 1292, 2293, and 2297. Um, we have broken those legacy courses up into three parts now um, for a couple of main reasons. One is to allow flexibility in what path you take. For instance, here you have a choice of two courses. You don't have to finish the three. And you can also take two courses in this trio and you have another choice. So it gives you more flexibility in path and suiting it to your goals. Um, it also gives you more flexibility in the schedule because the green boxes indicate courses where you have live class meetings and some students find it harder to commit to class meetings. So we tried to offer much of the content in these blue boxes, which is asynchronous. All right, now this sequence of three is about the simplest regime of vacuum system, which is the rough vacuum. We have the concepts course, the equipment course, and the operations course. 
Over here, we have a series of three related to high vacuum. Um, we have the equipment, which um, and the measurement and then applications. High vacuum equipment is more sophisticated. It creates a, a, a lower pressure regime. And um, this course also touches on ultra high vacuums. Down here, we have a series of three courses related to thin films. We have the material science course, which is um, shows about deposition techniques. And then we have these um, two properties of thin films, <clears throat> which describe characterization of the films, including mechanical, thermal, magnetic, electrical, and optical, optical properties of thin films. Up at the top, we have a um, series of vacuum system automation. The first one is the introductory course that covers manuals and schematic diagrams. The second one covers input output devices and the capstone for this series allows students to create their own human machine interface. With the exception of the 1010 course, these other courses are expected to be offered in about five week segments so that you can do a series of three um, in one semester if you choose to, but the flexibility of having it in all these little one credit um, boxes means that you have a lot more flexibility in how you want to do that. All right, so if you're unsure of which path or which courses would be best um, to serve your goals, you can contact any VAC Tech instructor or the program liaison for more information and guidance on that. Finally, if you'd like to read the actual course descriptions for all these courses, um, I'm showing it here. You can um, stop the video to, to read them in detail. This page talks about the rough vacuum courses. This page talks about the automation courses. And then we have a page of the high vacuum courses and a page of the thin films courses. Um, you can also find these descriptions where you register for each individual course.